Sylvia Sullivan says she attended as a concerned citizen. They have all the benefits of marriage under their civil unions in the state of California. They merely wish to somehow or other force their views upon us. And we say what's best for the children and for society is marriage could remain one man, one woman. LGBT rights in the United States of America are progressing at a steady rate. Its movement is slower than would have been preferred, though it is still advancing in progress. In the year 2015, however, rights in the United States are still limited for those in the LGBT community. With 1 in 100 men and 1 in 50 men in the United States identifying as homosexual, the community can no longer be covered up, deterred, or ignored, and progress must be made at a faster rate. With an approximate 3.4% of adults in the U.S. out of a surveyed 120,000 identifying as LGBT, this not including those who have not identified at all as being LGBT, the rights of this statistic must be enforced and protected. In some cases, a good place to start would to be to even start creating them. In theory and practice, it can be presumed that homophobic tendencies have been deeply ingrained into the American federal system due to the history of the country itself, the current laws and practices in place, and the restraint placed on possible advancements that could improve the quality of life for those who do identify as LGBT. The creation, maintenance, and acceptance of pro-LGBT laws in the United States are crucial to its advancement as a whole. Acceptance must come from within. In order to effectively analyze the current LGBT situation in the United States, one must take to understanding the history of the country in regards to homophobia, transphobia, so on and so forth. Only in recent years has the international community seen a significant change in the progression of LGBT rights within the United States. Much of this is due to all of the branches of the current Christian population in the United States, which is approximately 70.6%. And due to this majority, much of it belonging to the infamous Bible Belt, it has been a relatively slow turnaround in favor of internal change, which are inarguably human rights. Interestingly enough, homosexuality in the Bible is only insinuated or even mentioned six times, whereas eating shellfish, something called by the Bible itself as detestable, is mentioned in a bad light ten times. We should let the fundamentalist Christians at an all-you-can-eat buffet know about this. Not to mention that the Bible mentions that wearing mixed fabrics is a sin, but I guess we're all going to hell for one thing or another. Uh, a young boy is protesting that North Carolina church, which has said, until there is marriage equality, they won't do marriages of any kind, be they gay or straight. This is very, very disturbing video. This is a kid who appears to be, uh, I think he's about 11 years old, and he decided to go and stand right outside the Green Street United Methodist Church in North Carolina after they took this pledge to support equality. As an atheist, it is questionable to me that some parts of the Bible are followed, whereas others are blatantly ignored. We don't sentence women to death for sitting on a chair during their menstrual cycle, nor do we stone them to death if they want a divorce. That is because women's rights, as of 1920, have progressed immensely after the initial right to vote. They're seen as human rights, so why aren't LGBT rights considered basic human rights? Why do some people preach hate against love? Some past theoretical psychology behind homosexuality dates most famously back to the 19th century. American philosopher and psychologist William James believed that being repulsed by same-sex connections and contact was natural, and that this repulsion existed more strongly in men than in women. He believed that in cultures where homosexuality was accepted, that the repulsion was overlooked due to practice and habit. Edward Westermark, a Finnish philosopher and sociologist of the 20th century, shared similar beliefs with James, but he believed that the strong hatred for homosexuality that had been displayed by the Jewish, Christian, and Zoroastrian faiths existed due to their association with idolatry and heresy, and were therefore condemnable. Sigmund Freud created part of the Oedipus complex based on his social psychological viewing, believing that men and women had repressed attractions to a parent of of the same sex, though in some cases this repression did not work. There have been innumerable theories behind homosexuality, and since the early days of the US, as well as many other countries, it has been widely misunderstood. 
With a lack of knowledge comes a surge of concern from the people who fear the unknown. In the United States, this translated into bans on homosexuality and further misunderstandings for the entire LGBT community. With a mass migration into major cities such as New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, many industries became a same-sex workplace, as did the military, and many of those who did have homosexual inclinations were eventually drawn to one another. After the Second World War, however, many who had displayed homosexual tendencies were promptly left in port cities and dishonorably discharged. A ban on homosexuality followed suit in the army. In the 1950s, persecution of homosexuality was at an all-time high, and punishments included public humiliation, the ability to fire someone based on homosexual inclinations or just to dismiss them on the spot, being ostracized in society, and in some extreme cases, attempts on curing it. When I worked for Time magazine in the 60s, being human, I wanted to talk somewhat about my personal life to my colleagues and friends. But it all had to be straight. So instead of talking about Bill, a six foot two blonde, I had to talk about Nancy, a five foot one blonde. And then you had to remember your lives. It was hell to live through. And you felt always so duplicitous because you couldn't really be intimate with your straight friends because you were lying to all of them. And you knew that if they discovered the terrible truth, A, you would be fired from your job, and B, you would lose all your friends. As a result of this, several underground political organizations were created, one of which was named the Mattachine Society. Its goal was to educate the public on homosexuality, to support the homosexual community, and to fight for progression for gay rights. The name itself was derived from the Italian Mattachino, meaning a gesture who dares tell the truth to the king. The name fits relatively well in this case. A case study that could be utilized in this case includes a comparison between the current struggles for acceptance for the LGBT community and the previous, and sadly some cases, still current struggles of the U.S.'s black population. The United States, historically speaking at least, seems to need to have a fixation on the segregation or downright dismissal of a particular group of people. One of these being because of the color of someone's skin, another being how someone identifies or who they love. There was no such thing as a gay or lesbian person before the Stonewall riots. Now, Harry Hay explained this to me one day. I said, what do you mean there was no such thing as gay or lesbian? He said, well, you know, we were, uh, we were always thought of as sort of a broken model of a heterosexual normative. Why is it such a hard concept to believe that despite external appearances and interior identification that we are one race, a race that should be united? And yet in the self-proclaimed and proud United States of America, we've seen and we still see the opposite in some areas. Suppression. As of now, granted, LGBT rights are progressing at a rapid rate, with President Obama being hopefully the first of many to recognize gay marriage in the United States. This was in May of 2012. I have to tell you, as I said, I've, I've been going through an evolution on this issue. Um, I've always been adamant that uh, gay and lesbian uh, Americans should be treated fairly and equally. Uh, and that's why, in addition to everything we've done in this administration, rolling back don't ask, don't tell, uh, so that uh, you know, outstanding Americans can serve our country, uh, whether it's no longer defending the Defense Against Marriage Act, which uh, tried to federalize uh, what has historically been state law. Uh, I've stood on the side of broader equality for uh, the LGBT community. In November of the same year, Maine, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. became the first three states to recognize legal gay marriage. Since then, 34 other states have legalized it, whether it's by popular vote, through court decision, or by the state legislator. LGBT rights have progressed immensely considering the staggering obstacles that both stigma amongst the people and DOMA, D-O-M-A, amongst the government itself created. Everyone in the world has a sexual identity, and sexual identity is an incredibly fluid thing. This includes sort of a scale. 
For example, straight as an arrow would be a 1, bisexual might be a 5, homosexuality can vary from 6 to 10. All of these identities must be accounted for. Regardless of the, you're the majority, straight, or the minorities, gay, lesbian, bisexual, to name a few, you should feel safe in the environment that you're in and protected by your own government. A nation cannot truly claim to be united if segregation still exists. It is stated in the United Declaration of Human Rights, which was created in 1948 and has since been updated, that women of men of full age, without any limitation due to race, nationality, or religion, have the right to marry and to found a family. They are entitled to equal rights as to marriage, during marriage, and at its dissolution. This has been interpreted by many nations, and often the UN, as a meaning of prohibiting discrimination based on sexuality or gender, which is an incredibly good start. Given that each state in the U.S. is run independently, however, it is a much slower process due to the necessity of all 50 states to each independently come to the conclusion that gay marriage is and should be considered as a regular marriage. LGBT marriages are well on the way, but how are their rights as of now? As of now, it seems to vary from state to state, but the majority of those that have legalized gay or LGBT marriages include laws such as the right to marriage, to be legally married by the church or otherwise, to be recognized as a truly wed couple. The right to adopt is also included, the ability to start a family, a family lifestyle is supported by this, as well as the same benefits of heterosexual couples, including rights to taxes, so on and so forth, and to be protected by anti-discriminatory laws. DOMA itself was not completely abolished, but a key part of it was struck down. In 2013, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that in states that did recognize gay or LGBT marriage must also provide equal services, taxes, social security, so on and so forth, that heterosexual couples would normally receive to gay couples. This was an incredible step forwards, and by abolishing part of a destructive force, the LGBT community was allowed a breath of fresh air in an otherwise constricting environment. Gay and lesbian couples should have every right to experience the joys of marriage and family that we do. Marriage is an institution of equality that pulls an awful lot of other issues with it. It is a central institution to our way of life. We grew up with parents. We understand that marriage is about love, commitment, and family. It's an easy way to explain what equality is like. In regards to how LGBT rights are progressing, it is advancing at a decent rate. However, there are still major changes to be made in the coming years. Changes to further support these human rights that have been lacking for the history of the United States of America. In order to truly move forward as a nation, LGBT rights must be desperately pushed into being constitutionalized. With the laws that are currently in place, the following is purely theoretical and a simple mention of what could be coming in the United States' future. To begin, many of the states that belong to the Bible Belt need to push internally to even legalize gay marriage or LGBT marriage. In order to progress, LGBT rights must become unanimously unconditional and constitutionalized. LGBT rights are human rights. We no longer judge people based on the color of their skin, so why do we continue to harass and oppress a different minority? To be blunt, despite all of the advancements that the United States has made in recent years, there is still a long ways to go. Now this is all theoretical, and a suggestion at best, since I am not personally in charge of the upkeep of the United States of America, but this could be what is to come in future years. To reiterate, constitutionalizing LGBT rights play a crucial role in allowing for its advancement. The following comes from Andrew Popescu, a local member of the community. She says, While LGBT rights in the states are slowly but surely improving, it's also important to note that the battle doesn't simply end at the legalization of gay marriage. Of course, this is an important role in the movement, but at the same time, it erases other struggles of the LGBT community. It feels to me like the U.S. rights are sensationalized in a way. The few rights that have been so graciously given to LGBT people are mainly for the egos and well-being of cisgendered heterosexuals. We've already given you marriage, what more do you want? This argument will surely become the next fight in the U.S. as more and more states legalize gay marriage but continue to deny other basic human rights. When I asked her how their rights could improve, she responded with, for the rights to improve, it's important for others to even recognize them first. This means better representation and education to help bring 
serious issues to light. For example, transgender safety issues. Their extremely high murder rates come to mind. This is an issue that needs to be resolved, arguably before even legalizing marriage. Many LGBT people will not live to see their marriage. This needs to change. To put it simply, the U.S. needs a lot of work. Things need to change, and basic human rights must be acknowledged. We don't want to blend in. We just want to be treated with the same respect and fairness under protection of the law. And that's what I think this next generation really have an opportunity to do, which is maintain the specialness of our community and also expand the area of rights and opportunities that the LGBT community has been fighting so hard for.